What's up, everyone? I'm Justin Fiedler from Dirt Tracker, and this is the Rico Rundown. This season, the Rico Aber Racing Team has given me unprecedented access to take you inside their full 2024 sprint car campaign, and this is the first of what will be regular updates along the way. I'll be sharing their progress, video clips, exclusive photos, and insights from Rico, crew chief Ricky Warner, and crew guys Zach Middlebrooks and Brady Forbrook. The sprint car season in the United States won't start until next month, but Rico's year got rolling back in December down under. He spent the last few weeks in Western Australia running their USA vs. WA Speed Week, and his trip around the world will conclude later this week with the grand annual sprint car classic at Premier Speedway. Unlike many American drivers who go to Australia or New Zealand in the offseason, Rico and his team did things a little differently. Instead of just showing up with a helmet bag, they shipped a car and equipment in a container to Australia. Planning for the trip started in March of 2023 and wouldn't have been possible without the massive help of Luch Monti and Monty Farms and Carl and McDowling of Dowling Racing. The container left the U.S. after the Knoxville Nationals in August, packed with a complete car and spare parts, and was ready to go when Rico got to Australia in late December. Along with the equipment, Rico brought a whole crew with him, including Brian Matherly of Cating Performance to crew chief the deal, Brady Forbrook to handle tires, who normally works on his car, and his best friend and silver motorsports regular Trevor Canales to spin wrenches. This per uh, first part of the schedule included stops at Perth Motorplex and Bunbury Speedway, two places that Rico hadn't raced at before. Besides the new tracks, the team also had to adjust to a few different sprint car rules, including a very different tire. Down under, they run an 18-inch Hoosier on the right rear that's a different compound as well versus the 16-inch tire they run in the United States. They also have varying options for the left rear, with both rear tires being what they call grow tires. That means less sidewall reinforcement, and the tires will actually change shape with wheel spin. That puts more on the driver to control his throttle pedal through the night. The initial race of the trip was December 26th at Perth Motorplex, and this was Rico's first chance to just get comfortable. Hot laps and qualifying were a learning experience, but it didn't take the driver and crew long to figure it out. They started the main event in seventh, but we're uh, up to third just a few laps in. We saw some great racing up front between Rico, Brock Zierfoss, Callum Williamson, and Luke Oldfield. The 24 was second at halfway, and then a caution and a restart right after gave Rico the opening he needed to get by Oldfield for the top spot. There was nearly disaster late when a lapper spun in front of the leaders, and Rico had just enough space to sneak between the car and the wall. As the conditions slicken off here tonight at Perth, a bruise lead, less than a second, he's got the wall oh. it's because someone else was down there too but after the scare he was able to get away late and win on his first night out williamson and caden manders joined him on the night's podium sprint car hubs toby bell bowen hung around the team all night and made a great video if you haven't seen it yet i'll link to it below in the video description my favorite rico quote from it came after his first laps on track he told uh, toby quote the old rico april would come here and crash on the first lap of the hot laps <laughs> trying to run as hard as i yeah. can so yep he didn't do that, though, and showed why he's one of the top guys in the sport of sprint car racing. Fast forward a few days, teams were back at Perth on December 28th. Rico and the team were strong again, but there was an added wrinkle on the night with the addition of Brad Sweet. The five-time outlaw champion is fast wherever he goes, and it doesn't take him long to find the front. He grabbed the lead from Callan Williamson on lap 13, but the top two racing hard allowed Rico to go from his eighth starting spot to right into the battle. The next several laps saw massive sliders, all three drivers lead laps. I think all of them hit the wall at some point and all navigating thick, uh, thick lap traffic. But Williamson leads another lap and look at Abreu to the bottom. He might just get the lead here in the 24. We're watching something special here at the moment. Nothing separating these three cars. Abreu in the middle on the inside is sweet and Callum Williamson is brushing the wall. He's just in front by not very much. Dives to the inside. He's back in front. Abreu comes around the outside. Side. Cam McKenzie's there. A brew's now the leader. Sweet goes underneath of Williamson. A brew. Now it's Sweet in front. Sweet, a brew, and Williamson down the main street. What a race this is. It was some of the best sprint car racing that's ever been seen at the Perth Motorplex. Sweet was able to get away late for the win with Rico choosing a bit of a discipline over the final few laps when dealing with the lappers. He ended up second with Williamson in third. Rolling into the 2024 calendar year, Speed Week changed gears with a January 1st stop at Bunbury Speedway. Unlike Perth, Bunbury is quite a bit flatter and the surface can get technical with a little bit of character. But I don't know that a uh, California-born sprint car driver has ever met a technical racetrack they didn't like, and Rico was ready for the challenge. 
He started the main event fourth and got around race long leader Luke Oldfield at halfway. The ruts and traffic were a big factor towards the end, and things did get spicy with Oldfield trying to reel Rico back in. A key move around a lapper with four to go, though, sealed the win for the 24 team, their second in three races. Oldfield and Corey Eliason were also on the night's podium. The next two shows, January 2nd at Perth and January 6th back at Bunbury, were all about passing cars. Rico started outside the top 10 in both main events, but ended up 5th at Perth and 6th at Bunbury. That set him up with the Speed Week points lead headed to the finale at Perth. That final Speed Week show was Saturday night at Perth, January 13th. The early part of the night went according to plan with a 2nd place heat finish and a P6 start for the main event. The USAWA Speed Week title, though, for the team wasn't meant to be after a disaster struck just two laps in. Rico and Callan Williamson came together down the backstretch battling for fourth, and the contact led to a spin and significant damage to the 24. The RAR squad, along with a big assist from several other teams in the infield, attempted to get the car back out of the work area, but they ultimately ran out of time. A 21st place finish was a bummer end to the WA USA Speed Week Championship. Rico's trip down under wouldn't have been possible without the help of several partners who came on board the 24. That includes Australian uh, transportation company Denani Hotshots, Perth-based steel supplier DeCandolo Steel City, Money Farms, and the Western Australia Ford dealer Rumbled Ford. With the Western Australia part of the t uh, trip now complete, the team will head east this week. Their plan is to be at Borderline Speedway in Mount Gambier on Thursday before heading to the Grand Annual Sprint Car Classic at Premier next weekend. If you're heading to the Classic, stop down and see the team and grab some Rico Abreu gear. That's it for this edition of the Rico Rundown. We'll see you guys again very soon.